ideas. Beautiful. Um, so you've, you might have actually found yourself start needing to be at home and you, need, you might have found yourself needing to start a business from home. And a lot of the people I've been speaking to recently have left their work, they've left their employment and they are wondering what they're going to be doing in order to start paying the bills. So um, this might be very relevant for you at the moment, or this might be you're just trying to, you know, find a different di bit of um, a bit of something else to do, or you're a serial entrepreneur like me, and you just really love starting up new businesses and seeing what you can make out of them. So um, you might not have a huge amount of cash saved up um, for enormous amounts of stock. Um, you might not want to deal with the enormous shipping costs at the moment um, and also storage fees as well. So I've found 10 low cost solutions for you. If we haven't met already, hi, my name is Victoria. Like I previously said, I'm a bit of a serial entrepreneur. I do need to be very mindful of continuing to start new businesses. Um, I think the entrepreneur's brain is hardwired to look at shiny new objects and, and try and make things out of it. And um, I have learned along the way that spreading out um, that concentration doesn't actually lead to a very amazing business. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm trying very hard at the moment um, not to spread myself too thin. So I wanted to explain to you also that I am in the trenches with you. I work full time as a digital business advisor for Business Station, which is where we're here. But I have also owned bricks and mortar stores. I've owned um, you know, fair trade gift shops, bookstores. I've had a yoga studio. I was a yoga teacher. I've owned multiple e-commerce stores. And I do currently make my own products, so private label products, and I sell them on Amazon, my own websites, and possibly very soon moving into the US and Singapore with those products. So I'm also an author of three books on managing uh, your stress, and um, I'm a Shopify and Facebook partner, and a few other bits and pieces as well. I've just been elected onto the board of our Chamber of Commerce. So I just, I let you know all of this, and obviously, right down the bottom I'm first and foremost the mum of two teenagers um, I let you all know all of this because I want you to know that I practice what I preach I'm doing it all of this stuff at the same time as you are when I first started creating businesses Instagram Facebook marketing was really easy as it sort of is on TikTok at the moment um, but I really understand now how tricky it is. So what I do is I try to experiment on my own businesses first and then give the things that worked and the things that I found didn't work. So this, this webinar today is brought to you by Business Solution, the uh, Business Station. So um, you do get seven hours of personalised business mentorship for only $44. It's an absolute bargain. Some people are a bit wary of this because it actually sounds too good to be true, but it's subsidised by the federal government and we're very lucky at the moment to be able to have this funding come to us. So if you haven't joined already, already I really encourage you to join up. I specialise in social media and e-commerce, but there's numerous very clever experts on the team that can help you with any of your digital, um, digital issues that you might have, websites, cybersecurity, um, strategic planning, accounting, just so many things. So when we start a new business, um, you know, we can Google and we can YouTube, and we can have all, all these great ideas. But I encourage you to start with you. I encourage you to, to just take a step back and sort of not look at all of the businesses yet, but starting to think about you. It's actually a lot easier to make a business with your own strengths that you have already and your own interests that you have already. So trying to create a business that um, you know nothing about. Firstly, you've got a massive learning curve about the actual business. And secondly, you've got a massive learning curve of 
um, the products and everything about that business. So I encourage you to think about your strengths. And you might say to yourself, I don't have any. You absolutely do. We can have a chat about it at some stage. But there are things that you know that other people don't know. And I really encourage you to think about that while we're going through these businesses so that you can then think to yourself, oh, that business, no, that's not going to suit my family. That's not going to suit the time that I have. That's not going to suit my strengths. Um, I've got a bit of a weakness in that area, so I don't really want to focus on that. So when we're going through all of these, I really encourage you to think about your strengths and your weaknesses and, and, and try and focus on what is going to be the easiest process for you. So let's start with the first one, selling your service. So what are your strengths? What are you already good at? Can you do this from home? And can you become a freelancer? Can you market yourself or can you join Fiverr or Upwork? So marketing yourself is telling people what you do, setting up a Facebook page, setting up an Instagram page, perhaps setting up a website and telling people what you can do and then getting that word out there. So marketing yourself, putting yourself into Facebook groups, giving a lot of expert advice and then having a very clear call to action on how they can get to your services. So really starting to think about, is there something that you're good at? Is if You can do it with your eyes closed and other people seem to have issues with it or problems with it. So there's so many things you can do in that in, in this space. Um, so if you didn't want to market yourself or even if you wanted to, you know, uh, market yourself and put yourself on Fiverr or Upwork. So there are places where you find people to do services for you. If I was to um, want someone to create my logo, I would go to Upwork or Fiverr. If I wanted someone to create an Excel spreadsheet for me for a particular thing that I can't do, I don't like Excel at all, <laughs> I would probably go to Fiverr or Upwork to do that. If I wanted some copywriting done, if I wanted a blog, blog written, if I wanted someone to even help me make my website, that's where um, I would go to Fiverr up or Upwork and have a look around and start with Upwork. You can interview people with Fiverr. You just have to have a look around and see who you can get. Okay, services that you can do from home. You can be a virtual assistant. Everything's online these days. You don't even need to leave your home. I'm doing this webinar from my home office. Um, you can be a virtual assistant, so you can um, get things sent to you and then you can be the assistant. You can sort out their emails, you can sort out their um, admin, you can do data entry. There's so many things you can do as a virtual assistant to help people. You can become an online freelance writer. So what do you know about? What, what do you know so much about? You know, it might be sailing. It might be cleaning, it might be uh, admin or paperwork, you know, there's, there's so many things that you know more than someone else does. So you might be able to come a become a freelance writer about that. There's, a, there's some really cool um, people coming out talking about voiceovers in business. And so um, I know when, oh, this was a million years ago when I wanted an ad and I went to Fiverr, it was actually quite hard to get an ad, a voice for an ad in an Australian accent. And so you might think about something like that. Now, also, if you um, speak another language and you can do a voiceover in another language, that's fantastic. It opens up so many things to you um, and and you can do uh, you can one you can do a voiceover for ads and things but you can also be a um, a voice for an audible book uh, um, an ebook you could be a bookkeeper you could be a graphic designer social media manager or marketer a grant writer tutoring so if you're um, teaching and you've decided to uh, leave teaching for now you could do online tutor tutoring there's lots of people that need expert advice in that area. And that doesn't limit you to your local area. 
that that gives you opportunity when it's online you can do it all over Australia or New Zealand or wherever you want to be but it just obviously depends on the curriculum that you are trained in and it doesn't just need to be for kids as well lots and lots of adults want to do some extra learning too so what can you tutor those adults online with you could do consult um, consulting. So you may have left a job that you're um, a specialist in. Can you do some online consulting? And web designer. Lots of people want websites made at the moment. Okay, number two, you could write a book. You could write a book or you could put together a journal. So what sort of book could you make? Are you an amazing chef? Could you write a cookbook? Is there a particular dietary issue that you know a lot about because you've had to deal with it? Could you write a cookbook on that and share some of your experiences along the way? Do you have a travel, um, do you have a, you know, a, a gift for photography? Do you have some amazing photos from some of your travels? I wonder if you could put a book together about that and um, have some you know, some funny stories along with that as well. Could you write a journal? Could you do a poetry book? Could you do a graphic novel? So I had a play with this one because I wanted to, like I said, I try to test things first. And I'll show you in the next one. I, I looked at KDP. KDP self-publishing paperback journal. So you'll see on the left hand side, there's a little video that goes together. So you go to, if you want to screenshot this um, page, you might want to. So you go to the KDP publishing account and you do some research around the best selling journals. So, and you think about your niche. So what are you interested in and what audience do you already have? You know, are you in a cycling group? Are you in a crochet group? Are you in, you know, some group, on, are you in a soccer group? Is there something that you can make that resonates with those people? And then you've already got an audience to sell to. So you fill out um, all, you research those keywords that are around those niches and the key phrases. So when we talk about keywords, it's not just one word, it can be three or four words put together. So you fill out all the details with the keywords sort of sprinkled in onto the KDP website. This is all for free. And then you download a cover template for Canva. So Canva, I use a paid Canva at $17.99 per month and you can currently have five people on that one account. So you can split it if you want to, but just understand that you're going to see everybody else's and everybody else is going to see yours, your um, templates and designs. So you download that cover in, in Canva and then um, select um, PDF print plus crop and feed, a uh, bleed and download. So, um, and then you create the lines for the interior pages. And again, select PDF print plus crop plus bleed and download. And then you upload that interior and the cover files into the KB KDP. You launch the previewer, check your work. And then it takes a little while for them to come back to say, yes, it is good. And then they publish it. So I'll just play that video again. Click on paperback. Make your book title with some lovely keywords put in there. It automatically um, creates an ISBN for you. So a barcode. You just need to say that you're exclusively going to sell it on um, KDP. And then you put in the size that it gives you in KDP. I had to check it when I was doing that. You make it PDF, crop marks and bleed and download. And I just made that 50 pages long just by um, duplicating the pages. I didn't have to make every single page. They're exactly the same, they're just aligned pages. Then the paper bucket um, has been submitted. And then, like I said, it comes back to you. You choose the price. It tells you how much you're going to make out of each ebook. And then they're on Amazon. And Amazon prints it, Amazon sells it, and sends it out. 
So you're not going to get a huge amount of money on each one of these, but you could create quite a few of them. And then it's always about the marketing afterwards. So it's with all of these businesses, it's you telling as many people as you possibly can what you've done and why they need it. <laughs> okay, so number three, you could perhaps make a digital product. So is there something that you know how to create that people can download? Is there a video series of something that you can do? Is there an audio series? You might have poems. Are there templates? Do you have Excel um, templates and spreadsheets that people love? Do you know what's going really, really well at the moment? Cleaning checklists. <laughs> I check um, the best selling things in a few different platforms all the time so I can keep up with what's going on. And on Etsy, the cleaning templates are just being downloaded ridiculous amounts of time. It's quite amazing. It really is. Um, can you create a PDF course? Um, is, is it, do, like I said before, are you a beautiful, amazing photographer? Could you actually put some of those on, um, even on Canva or on Pixels? Can you sell those photos? What about music? What about a guide to tutorials? Can you create some software? Can you create an app? Can you create a website widget? Um, perhaps some recipes, download digital printables like the checklist I was talking about, perhaps a calculator to add things up. Um, you know, I'm not a money person and um, when people create calculators for me and make my life easier, I just think it's a godsend. It's fantastic. Um, can you create checklists? People love checklists. They really do. Is there a pattern? Are you a sewer or are you, you know, do you make things out of wood? And can you create a pattern and sell that? Um, plans, images, infographics. So there's a great resource on how to create an online course. Now, I encourage you to have a look at that, um, have a look at this website. We're going to go to the website, but you might want to write that down because we don't send you out a PDF of any of these. Um, but obviously, you can get it in the recording. Now, I'm not affiliated with Kajabi at all. I just found this to be a really great resource that you might want to have a look at. Now, Kajabi is a platform that you can place your online courses on. And so then people can access that and they can have a look at it. It's a bit pricey. There are other few others out there. But um, this one, I'll just go through that quickly. I'm going to scroll down so make sure that, you know, your eyes adjust to this. So nine steps to selling courses online, a complete guide. Really, I, if you are thinking of creating some sort of course, this is a really fabulous step by step by step that teaches you how to do this. Now, I've created, I'm not sure, 50 maybe courses online. And I found this when I started creating courses, I found it quite hard to figure out what to do first, what to do next, which platform to put it on, how to make piece it all together. I, I did a lot of, um, you know, uh, sticky notes and move them around. Um, that's how many years ago I started creating courses. But these, this actually gives you a really, really great step by step. Another place that I use is Trello to try and sort of, um, you can move little cards around in Trello and then that just makes everything that I'm doing in, in alignment. That's also how I wrote my books as well. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so are you crafty? Are you crafty? Do you enjoy doing something at home? Um, and do you have do you have all the things at home? So you might actually be able to turn that into a business. That would be amazing. And I know I'm a crafty person. I, I love it. It's my stress management. And it would be, you know, 
I, the, the reason why I don't do this because I get bored out of one craft and then I don't like doing it again. <laughs> but if you're a sort of if you're the sort of person that really, really likes doing the same thing and making lots and lots of the same thing, that's fantastic. So you might like to go onto a marketplace like Etsy or Amazon Handmade and just have a look at the, the things that are there. And you might look at them and say, holy dooly, I can do a fantastic job at that. I love doing that. So you might actually be able to do that. And then, you know, selling them, just have be very mindful of the postage cost. You need to add in shipping, and that's quite expensive at the moment. So add in shipping to the cost to make sure that you are making money out of it. But, you know, what a, what a wonderful way of creating a, a business, something that you already really enjoy doing. So there's loads and loads of things that you can do getting crafty. You can make um, vinyl decals, stickers and things like that seem to be doing really, well, really well. Custom mugs, you can do t-shirts and tote bags and cushion covers. A lot of these stuff you could even do print on demand and I'm going to show you that in a few moments. Perhaps stuffed toys, perhaps bath bombs, birdhouses, you know, hand, handbags, hand, uh, art prints, keychains, wreaths. There's, there's so many art and crafty things that you can do. Um, just be very, very mindful of pricing it correctly. Um, I, was, I had something in my mind. Oh, it's, okay. So when you are doing things like bath bombs and candles, making sure that you're keeping yourself safe because a lot of the ingredients and soap making that kind of thing making sure that you're keeping yourself very very safe um, and also making sure that it is safe for the people you really don't want somebody going into a bath bomb that you have made and it hurting their skin at all just just, just do a little bit of research around it now you may have heard of affiliate marketing so affiliate marketing you decide on a platform um, and you choose your niche so then you find affiliate programs to join so affiliate marketing is when you sell somebody else's product and you get a percentage of the sale when it happens so there's loads and loads of different ways to do affiliate marketing but again, I encourage you to think about your strengths because it's going to be so much easier for you to sell something that you know a lot about. So you, you create some wonderful content, you create um, a Facebook page about it, you create a TikTok account about it, you create, you know, marketing collateral for it. And then you have a personalized affiliate link and then you get a percentage of each sale. So this really costs nothing but um, your time. So it's, it's either going to be costing um, your money or it's going to be costing your time. I've just got a question here. I'm just going to check that. Okay, affiliate marketing. Do we eventually lose the sales to the supplier? Yes. Yep, I'm going to be completely and utterly honest here. Yep. So um, if you are going to then do, um, if people are going to continue buying from that supplier, you will, um, you, you won't get, oh, actually, no, in some circumstances, if they keep buying through your link, you continue getting um, a percentage of that sale. But a lot of the time, they go straight to the supplier and they get that there. So no way of protecting our market. It's their business. It's not your business. And this, this, this is what you, I'm so glad you're bringing up these, um, these questions, Lindy, because we need to go into these, all of these businesses with our eyes very, very open. And so there isn't necessarily a way of protecting your market. Um, yes, they are both, um, but they are our customers but it's still th that other person's product. Yep. So it's not your personal product. So that they, they can, um, you know, they can, they can take you off their affiliate list. And this, this is all of the um, things that you need to be very, very wary about. Oh, that was another question in there. Okay. So not a viable long-term option. That's a great thing that you just brought up. 
all of these, I personally believe, are a start. These are really great ways of finding out how you market, what you enjoy doing, and where you want to be. And so I encourage you to have a look at some of these things and then sort of say, I can do that myself. Invest some money into it because then you know that it is your, um, it's your business, it's your company. Um, and you already know that it's a viable option because you've practiced with all of these before. So then it can become a long-term option. Great question. So, um, so you drive traffic to their affiliate site and you get uh, clicks on your affiliate links and then you get paid a percentage of each sale. So you can use this as your whole entire business, but you need to drive a lot of traffic to get a decent amount of money. I'm just going to check, click on this. So this is ClickBank. This is affiliates that you can choose from. So um, this is free to join up. And you choose loads and loads and loads of products. So you can choose, that these are usually digital products that people can download, their courses, their video courses, that kind of thing. And then you get a percentage each time that they, they sign up. So like, like we were saying before, I really encourage you to, if you're going down to this affiliate track, trial it out for a while see what sits with you, see what you want to look at every single day for the next four or five years. And then you might like to create your own product and then be able to get the whole percentage of that sale. And then you can go on ClickBank and you can get affiliates for yours as well. So these are sort of stepping stones into finding out how you like business, how you feel as an entrepreneur, um, and, and, and just starting to get a really good feel of it. I've, I'll always say making, being an entrepreneur and being your own business in your own business is the biggest self-help book that you'll ever have in your whole entire life. You find out so many things about your personality and so many things about how you deal and manage with stress and happiness and the highs and lows. Um, and it's, it's really quite interesting. Okay, so let's have a look. This is another very similar to affiliate marketing. So multi-level marketing, you might have heard of MLMs. In multi-level marketing, so there's two different streams of revenue. With affiliates, there's one stream of revenue. With multi-level marketing, there's two streams of revenue. So it's the same as the affiliates, you get a percentage of each sale that you sell. Um, but with multi-level marketing, you do it as a bit of a team um, situation as well. And then you build up your team. I'm not explaining this very well, but you build up your team and then you get a percentage of everything that they sell as well. So there's two sort of levels of streams of um, income that you can get again the same as what we were talking about with affiliate marketing. You don't own this business. You're just getting a percentage of each sale. This business, um, people do very, very well in this business. Some people don't do very, very well in this business. Um, sometimes these businesses shut down and then you've lost your whole entire business as well. So eyes open people, let's just be very clear on, on what we can do here. If you're incredibly passionate about um, a, an MLM, they can work very, very well. I've seen multi-level marketing work very well when people have another stream of income that piggybacks off their multi-level marketing. So a good friend of mine um, was selling oils She's a jewellery maker, so she was creating um, beautiful vial necklaces that she can sell as well. So it's sort of piggybacking and integrating those different businesses as well. And I'll, another lady who's doing very well in ML marketing, but um, she's a health coach as well. So she's using those and integrating both of them together. Okay, so multi-level marketing, you can um, earn income directly from recruiting a new downline member. Uh, 
these words are different sometimes in, in the different multi-level marketing companies that you come into. Um, and you can also earn your share of any products that they sell and the rec recruits that they onboard. So you might have heard some of these, these multi-level marketers. So do, doTERRA, Airborne, Ronan Fields, Herbalife, Tupperware. I mean, Tupperware was one of the first Avon. <laughs> um, you know, these these have been around for a long time and they're billion dollar industries. So, you know, they, they work for some people. Dropshipping. Okay, so I've been speaking to many, many people about dropshipping uh, it almost seems to be a daily conversation that I have with people at the moment. So let me just explain to you what dropshipping is, if you don't know what it is. So it's a process that allows e-commerce stores to sell products online without having the stock. Very similar to affiliate marketing. You'll see a bit of a thread coming along here. So um, the the e-commerce store they stock it they they store it they ship the items themselves so all of this is handled by a third party who sends a packaging order to your customer making it much much easier for you so firstly let, let's take a step back so um, you set up a website you can choose the, shopify actually makes this incredibly easy for drop shippers you choose a company that's got loads and loads of products um, or you could choose a wholesaler yourself that has loads of products. You market it. There's, you'll see a common thread through all of this. You have to market it. You market it and then you get a sale. That sale goes to the supplier. That, that process of the sale goes to the supplier. The supplier packs it up and sends it to your customer. So you don't have to buy stock. You don't have to store the stock. You don't have to send the stock. You just need to tell the customers um, what it is and the benefits of it. So again, this can be a really, really um, good business to start getting into, but you're going to get a very, very small percentage of that. Uh, like I said, I'm having lots of conversations with people about this at the moment. Um, it used to be only about three, three to five percent of each sale, but had a conversation the other day with someone that was getting 20 percent of each sale. So you might, yeah, do there's a lots and lots of drop shipping things happening at the moment. Um, so just do your research and, and see what is best. Has anyone got any questions about drop shipping while we're here? Let me just have a look. Nope, all good. Everyone's cool. Understand what dropshipping is? Groovy. Okay, so moving on to number eight. You can also buy an existing e commerce business. So if you go into a place like Flipper or if you go into Exchange Marketplace, Exchange Marketplace is the Shopify Marketplace. Let me just show you that. And then you can buy a business that's already been set up. And a lot of these businesses are drop shipping. So you can see that this has inventory value. So this one is not a drop shipping. Um, and this one doesn't have any inventory. So I'd say that is a drop shipping site. But you can see the different listings of them. So, you know, there's loads of different uh, prices on here. Offer support, offer support, that's fantastic. There's some ones that are fairly high priced. We've got 82 going on here. And then drop shipping stores, business for an experienced entrepreneur. And you can have a look in their monthly revenue and see what it is. All of these need to be marketed. All of these need, you know, you don't just buy a website and people will um, come to it. So it's you learning how to market, um, market yourself, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever your customers are. Okay, let's have a look at some more. Number nine, print on demand. 
They're much the same as drop shipping. The customer purchases the product and it gets made to order. So you don't have to hold any stock. You don't have to store any stock. You don't have to have a warehouse. You don't have to have anything like that. I know a person that did print on demand. Um, I started watching her business grow. Goodness gracious. Oh, it's probably going on about four or five years now. Um, she did print on demand. She found out what worked very, very well. And then she printed, she bought her own screen printer so that she, she was going to get a lot more of the profit. So starting out with these things, see what sits well with your family, with your lifestyle. And then um, if it works, fantastic. You might actually like to make that into uh, a, a bigger business and, and start to create your own products. So usually printing, um, the printing company prints the package and they send it directly to the company. You'll have a look at quite a few of these things and some of them just aren't available in Australia. So I popped to in here that are available in Australia. So what can you get printed in Australia? So Printify. So you create and you sell custom products. And there's loads that you can print. So having a look down, see there's iPhone covers, there's hats, there's beanies, there's t-shirts, there's hoodies, there's tags. So many different things that you can do. And they even make it easier, you know, so you can connect all of these different stores that you've got just to make that customer flow really, really easy. Okay, I think I've got a question in here. Okay, drop shipping, is there anywhere to easily source high quality drop shipping products? Yep, so um, that's one of the biggest concerns in my eyes about uh, drop shipping products. So just to elaborate on that for everybody else, Lindy, thanks for the question. Um, with drop shipping, unless you buy every single product that you are going to be selling, feel the quality of it, see how fast it gets shipped to you, see if it gets shipped to you in great packaging, nothing's going to break. That is the biggest issue in my eyes about drop shipping because you don't know the quality of your product. So I encourage you, Lindy, to sort of do a lot of research around this. Find, um, find a niche and, and just even order two or three and seeing if, see if you'd like to start selling those products. So it, it's a little bit trickier um, and, and you're not gonna buy a hundred products. I mean, you might, but I, I don't suggest doing that um, and trying to find some samples and then, have, and then going with that company. And then hopefully they're going to continue sending out quality uh, to other people. Okay, Lindy also says to buy an established online business, how does one work out a good value price? Uh, uh, revenue profit equals sales price. Again, lots and lots of research. So I would get one of the ones that offers ongoing support so that you know that they're just not going to run away and you can give, they've got a little bit of accountability because they're giving you ongoing support. Obviously, see what sort of support they give you, if it's an actual person um, or if it's a company doing hundreds and thousands of them, uh, just, you know, drop shipping sites, just be, be mindful of that. Um, I'm not sure if that answered the question, though. To buy an established online business, I just want to work out a good value price. Um, also, to be completely and utterly transparent, uh, pricing is not my strong point. So I can, there's a, um, a, an amazing guru in our team that I always ask these questions to. So Lindy, if you wanted me to put that question to one of our gurus who called Kelby, I can absolutely do that for you and I can get back to you. If you wanted to email me, my email is Victoria at businessstation.com.au um, and I'll, I'll try and get back to that question. Okay, I'm just struggling to source them. Yeah, I know, that is really, really tricky. I totally understand. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for one second. 
Yeah, we're just going back to our screen, uh, share screen. Excellent. Okie doke. So this is Printify. Now let me show you another one, Gelato. I did start having a bit of a play with Gelato when I was putting this together, but I just didn't. Um, I ran out of time, so. Oh, it's not coming up. Okay, so Gelato is another one where you can get um, we can get loads and loads of different products. There's also Cafe Press that you can get loads of products from, even yoga pants with your design on it. Like it's, yeah, there's, there's pillowcases, all, all sorts of things that you can do. But again, it is a very small percentage that you get when you're doing this print on demand because you're not making it. You're not stocking anything. You're not storing anything. You're not sending it out. But using this, as a bit of a, oh, gee, I really like that. Or no, 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 that's not for me. I'm not doing that. So this, this is fun to have a little bit of a play around if you've got some time. Now, social media. Yay. <laughs> um, you could possibly come become a content creator for a variety of brands. There's so many, and I speak to loads of businesses every single day. It's my full-time job talking to small businesses every single day. Um, there's loads of businesses that have absolutely no idea how to create content. They do not want to get their faces in front of a camera and start showing their face and, and creating content. They don't know how to um, take photos of their take photos of their product or their services. They just don't know how to do it. So if you're really comfortable, in that space, great. There's loads of people who are actually wanting you to do this. I was listening to um, a business thing just this morning and uh, this an American lady was being very open about uh, a micro-influencer. So a micro-influencer has about 10,000 followers on Instagram, so not very many, and she was charging $600 per post. Now that is just, well, no, what was it? $600 per post and an Instagram story. So just two pictures, not even a video, not even anything like that. And she explained it quite well because it's not just two, it's not 600 bucks for two pictures. It's 600 bucks so that brand can then use it in their social media content and perhaps use it for advertising as well. So hopefully that brand is going to get lots of return on investment for it. But as a creator, you could actually get, um, you know, that could become quite, quite a viable business for you. If you're really comfortable in front of a camera or you're really comfortable, you know, setting up a little, um, a little photography area in, in your house or, you know, doing it at the beach. Recently, I got up at five o'clock in the morning so I could get some really great shots of my products um, with the beautiful um, morning light coming in and I took about 100 photos and, and you know I've been using those over and over again. So there, there, are, there are very good ways of becoming a content creator at the moment. You can also become a brand ambassador. So brand ambassador steps up the next level for a content creator. Content creators do a variety of brands. They, you know, they spread themselves across lots of different um, places. And that's not necessarily an influencer either. So an influencer has a big following and can sell to that following. This is just creating content for the brand, not necessarily selling it to the other person's um, following. But a brand ambassador basically is a full-time job or a part-time job where you're employed specifically by that brand. So I've got a skincare company. You might come to me and say, um, you know, I'm, I'm the perfect person for you. I'm, I've got sensitive skin. I'm over, you know, I'm 35 to 45, which is your target market. I'm female, I'm Australian. Um, I'd like to become your brand ambassador. And then, you know, we'd, we'd form a contract. We'd make a contract and you, you would be the face of our brand. And so that, that's basically, you know, a full-time job. And that brand would probably say, we don't want you to be the face of the brand for anybody else. Okay. Or a social media manager. You'll believe how many people ask me on a daily basis, do you know a social media manager that can take over and do 
the content for me post it on um, Instagram, Facebook or TikTok or YouTube or, you know, LinkedIn, wherever your customers are, and also answer any comments and, and do all of the other things that you need to do to, um, to grow your business on social media. So loads of people wanting that because they're running their businesses and they just don't have time to do the social content for that. So social media manager. So we've got to 10. Let me see if there's any questions in here. Yep, I bet. Cool, cool, cool. So here we are. So digital solutions. Um, the program that we, you know, that we are running this through, we're able to do these webinars for you, is the program I was talking about at the beginning, that's seven hours for $44. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have registered here. And so I'm really talking about asking your friends if they want to join. So you do have to have an ABN in WA, Queensland or Northern Territory. We can help start businesses. We've, we've all done our own businesses. A lot of us are still doing our businesses on the side um, or working part-time. And so we've, we've been in the, in this, you know, in the industries for quite a long time. All, all of the people have been that are in this program, the digital solutions program um, and mentoring you. So if you've got a friend that is sort of saying, oh, I don't really know, an ABN's free, just go and grab an ABN, don't have to have a business name, grab an ABN, um, and where, where it says here you must be running your business to make a profit, even if you're not making a profit right now, that's fine. It's we're not accessing in this program non for profits. So when you're setting up your business, you either set it up for a profit um, to make a profit or you set it up as a non for profit. If you have a non for profit business, we do have other programs for you to help you. And you need to have fewer than 20 full-time staff members. Most of us are running these businesses as solopreneurs by ourselves. So this is exactly for you. So yeah, perhaps um, if you are already in this program, perhaps tell your friends. It's such a good deal. It, it really is. Uh, the link is there, businessstation.link forward slash register. My name's Victoria Ewan. If you wanted to um, come and chat with me, you're very welcome to. And you can put in any of the other advisors as um, preferred advisors. So let me just stop my share. Let me go into the questions. Excellent. I'm already booked in, just waiting for my appointment. She's been sick. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, there's loads of people sick at the moment. Yeah, I'm having to cancel things left, right and centre all over the place. Um, and even if people aren't sick, a lot of the times people are waiting for COVID tests and things, so they need to isolate and change things. So if you do have any questions, please pop them into the chat or pop them into the Q&A. Um, how, how do you feel about some of those ventures? There's, um, you know, I gave you 10. And right at the beginning, that's what I said. Think about your strengths. You know, you might actually look, look at one and go, oh, no way. I don't want to do that. Great. That's fantastic. Cut it out of your memory. Cut it out of your life. And just focus on the ones that you think is going to be great for your family, great for your health, great to stimulate your mind. And, um, and, and great for um, building yourself and your, your entrepreneurial muscles up. And then looking, at to, looking into um, how can you expand on that and, and make it into a really great viable business. Just checking that Q&A. Okay. All right. So there are a few things I could integrate into our current new business. Yeah, exactly. Why not? You know, I've had a, I've had a ball making those journals. That's been way too much fun for me. Um, you know, it's because it, that's my craft time now. <laughs> that's my my mindful craft time. So it's a great idea about um, you know integrating a few different things. So um, yeah, and you've piqued my interest in dropshipping again. If I can possibly source some good product, I totally agree. Now, a tip for you, Lindy. You might think about wholesaling so you might sort of 
a lot of people say drop shipping, but you might even think about wholesaling and, and, and contacting a company that you're really, really interested in and saying to them, you know, would, would you be interested in doing some form of drop shipping with me? You know, I get, I get these clients in and you pack it off and sell it. Loads of companies might actually be interested in doing that because it's another um, audience that they can get to without, um, without them trying to do it. Does that make sense? <laughs> and I know that's a similar thing that I'm going to be doing with my skincare as well. You know, people, I'm going to be giving people affiliate links and then they can um, get a percentage of each sale that they that they do as well. So there's, there's loads of different ways that we can do this. So you don't need to go down a traditional route. Um, if, you know, the world recently has taught us anything that we can evolve and we can pivot and we can, I've started talking about dancing through all of these different things that we can do. It takes a little bit of a, you know, forwards and back little step every now and then and maybe a side step. But if we can dance through all of these things and make our life great and um, design our own lives, then, you know, you're winning. You're absolutely winning. So whichever, whichever business you decide to get into, I wish you the absolute success. Um, there are going to be good days. There are going to be really crappy days, but that is what business is. So we're here to help you if you need to. Just get in touch with us and, um, and, and we'll do everything we can for you. Just checking the... Um, I do have wholesales and I'm using Yay! Fantastic. Yes, great. That's really, really good. Okay, so thank you so much for, um, you know, um, for conversing with me as well today. And, and opening up and, and sharing some things too. I really appreciate your time. And let me know if I can do anything. So I wish you very, very well in your life and your business. Take care.